Whoa. Today we gather as a community to engage one another, engage God in worship, and engage in sharing the love of Christ. Welcome to Engage. Hey, New Hope Youth and Young Adults, is Pastor Graves coming to you for your weekly word. If you would, join me for a word of believing prayer. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to be able to gather. Lord, we pray that your word might go forth so that our lives might be ever transformed. Lord God, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who gives us hope, joy, peace, and love in the midst of this season. And for that, Lord, we tell you thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our big idea for this week is simply this. The gifts that God gives us can be surprising. What's the most surprising gift you've ever received, whether good or bad? I know for me, the most surprising gift I've ever received didn't come under a Christmas tree, but rather it was when my wife told me that we were expecting a child. I was surprised because, watch this, I was grateful that I was going to become a father, but I was also uneasy because I've never been a father before in my life. I didn't know what to expect, and oftentimes that's how surprises get us. They make us feel good in some ways, but at the same time, we have this tension where we're uneasy because it catches us off guard, right? And so this gift was a great gift, but it was a surprising gift. And as we enter into this Christmas season, I don't know if you'll get any surprises when you open your Christmas gifts this year, but I do know this. I hope it's the kind of surprise that causes you to rejoice instead of bursting out in tears. Because surprises can both be good and bad, and us as believers, we ought to respond to our surprises with rejoicing. And this word rejoicing, what comes to mind when you hear the word rejoice? When might you see people rejoicing? If you're joining us for the first time during this series, we're in the third week of Advent. And not only that, we're in the third week of this conversation about what is this season of Advent all about. In the first week of this series, we talked about how to get ready to receive God's gifts. This gift God gives us isn't something that's under the tree, but rather it's someone. It's the person of Jesus Christ that he gives us. And last week, we talked about how we can share this gift that we've been given with others, even if you don't feel qualified or equipped to do that. This week, we're going to talk about the gift that God has given us and why this gift causes so many people to rejoice. Last week, Minister Butler did an excellent job of talking about how Ordinary people like you and I are called to the responsibility of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with those we interact with. And not just those who we interact with, but everyone in the world we're called to share that gift with. And how these people weren't experts, but rather what they did was they used their ordinary selves to spread a gospel message that changed the entirety of the world. All they were trying to do is was witness to the power, the majesty, and the goodness of the gift of Jesus Christ. And we also talked about last week about this prophet by the name of John the Baptist who shared the gift of Jesus Christ with others. And John came onto the scene to prepare people's hearts and minds for the message of Jesus Christ. And unlike the ordinary people who shared the news of Jesus with others, John was not exactly what you would call ordinary, right? Why, why do I know this? Because first, John didn't look very ordinary. He lived in a desert. He wore clothes that were made out of camel skin, and he even ate bugs. Not only that, beyond John's uh, appearance, John's message wasn't ordinary either. The things John preached about were extraordinary. How were they extraordinary, Pastor Graves? Here's a few reasons they were extraordinary. First, John was claiming 
the thing Israel had spent hundreds of years waiting for was finally here. That sounds extraordinary to me. You got people waiting hundreds of years for this thing to come to pass. And then this random guy by the name of John pops up on the scene saying, look, the time is finally here. They had been waiting for peace. They had been waiting for love. They had been waiting for joy. And they had been waiting for this gift. And here it is. It pops up. And John is the one who is called to bring that message to the people. And so according to John's message, this is the thing. The Savior is here. And this is huge news. That's not the only extraordinary thing about this message. But the second thing about this message that is extraordinary is this. This news was surprising because of who God's people were expecting. Right. They knew that a savior was coming, but they were expecting a powerful king or an important political figure, not someone who would be announced by a guy who uh, lived in a desert and who ate bugs, not a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and not someone who didn't have room to lay their head. They were expecting a big, powerful person to come and be their Lord and Savior, but rather God presented this gift in an amazing way. The third way we see this is extraordinary is because John was telling people to change the way they live. No one likes being told to change the way they live. And John told these people to prepare their hearts to start acting differently and let the coming Messiah who was about to be revealed as Jesus to change their lives. And as you might imagine, everybody didn't like that or it didn't sit well with everybody. The religious people of the day, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they didn't like this. They believed that in order to get God to accept you, that you had to follow rules, both God's rules and the rules that these religious people had set up for people to follow. And they also believed that they had everything figured out when it came to God. These religious leaders didn't believe John's message, so they created a stir that got John thrown in jail. You can imagine how much of a downer this was for John, but while he was there, the amazing thing is that John gets more good news. John gets to hear about all the great things Jesus was doing. And how Jesus' ministry truly was a fulfillment of the prophecy that he had been delivering. The message God had asked John to share with others was coming true. And I don't know what was going through John's head as he was in prison. Maybe because of his imprisonment, torture, and his impending death, he needed some encouragement, some reassurance. And maybe he was still a little surprised that the Savior of the world was his own cousin. John asked his followers to go talk to Jesus and make sure that he was the Savior John believed him to be. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 1 through 6, we read these words. When Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their cities. Now, when John heard in prison, about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. No matter how certain John probably felt about the message that he had been preaching for so long, I'm sure the news that he hadn't been mistaken was still a little bit surprising. The news was so good, actually almost too good to be true, that maybe John couldn't help but be surprised to find out that it was true. Jesus tells John's disciples that John was right all along. And now that he, the Savior, was there, it was time to rejoice. Yes, 
God's gifts can be surprising. The coming of Jesus was a surprising gift that caused the people to rejoice. But God's surprising gifts don't just end there. We read in the text that along with his presence, the hope of Jesus is the promise that the blind will begin to see. It's the promise that the lame will walk, that the sick will be healed, that the dead will be raised, the poor will receive good news. The surprising news of Jesus was that God isn't oppressed by our ability to follow rules or be good people. Jesus came to change everything. He defied customs and expectations and rules and even the laws of the universe to miraculously change everything. God's gifts can be surprising. And because they are surprising, they should cause us to rejoice. The gift of Jesus was brand new at the time of John the Baptist, but the arrival of Jesus isn't the only thing that makes us rejoice today. We also celebrate his work in us and in the world today. Just because Jesus is off the scene in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, it doesn't mean he's not working. I love that song that says, even when I don't see it, you're working. Jesus promised to bring healing, salvation, and love to the world. And those promises were fulfilled in his arrival on earth. But they continue to be fulfilled even to this day. Even after Jesus left the earth, he continues to heal, save, and love us in so many ways. God's people thought they were waiting for an earthly king to save them, but the savior they got was so much better than who they were expecting. Jesus didn't come to make political changes in the world. He came to make changes in our lives that impact our souls and our spirits. He can heal us from our bitterness, our anger, and our selfishness. He can show us that we're loved and he helps us to find peace. He changes our lives from the inside out and that is enough of a reason to rejoice. Rejoice this week. I hope you'll get God to surprise you with the gift of Jesus Christ. And I don't know how Jesus wants to show up in your life right now, but I know this, he wants to show up in your life. Just like he showed up after John had been talking about him all this time over 2,000 years ago, he is still changing everything today. And that's a reason to rejoice. This week, what if something good happened? You, you rejoice, wouldn't you? Get extra fries in your bag, you're going to rejoice. If you get a day at the house with no chores, you will rejoice. Your mom makes your favorite meal. That thing will cause you to rejoice. Can you imagine how your heart might change if you began to thank God for the small things that you're given each day? But what if something disappointing happened, Pastor Graves, or you have a bad day? What if you think, I can't find a single thing to rejoice about during this season? I've been there. <laughs> Trust me. But what I've learned is this. Even when everything is going awful, you still have a reason to rejoice. Even if you're going through something that feels like it's insurmountable, know this. God is still worthy of praise, honor, and glory. Thank God that tomorrow is a new day. Thank God that God is sustaining you in the midst of your trials and tribulations. Let me just encourage you, learn to rejoice. Think about this. How different would your heart be if you thank God even when it was the last thing you thought you ought to do? Not just rejoice for yourself, but also learn to help others to rejoice. Help someone else to rejoice. There might be someone in your life right now who is struggling to find a reason to rejoice during this Advent season. And maybe God wants to use you to surprise someone with a reason to rejoice. Maybe you can surprise someone in your life with an actual gift. Maybe not an Amazon gift card, but maybe you can do something to serve them or encourage them or to love them. 
Maybe you can help your parents to rejoice by writing them a letter of thanksgiving and appreciation for the many sacrifices that they made and continue to make for you. If you don't have, you don't have to spend a lot of money to give people a reason to rejoice. As a matter of fact, most people rejoice over things that can't be bought rather than things that can. If you find yourself being asked by that person, why are they doing this thing for you? Why are you doing this thing for them? Just go ahead and tell them, I want you to rejoice about the majesty and the glory of the great surprising gift that God gives us in the person of Jesus Christ. I did this because I know that Jesus loves me and he loves you. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of gift worth celebrating in this season of Advent. With all that's going on in the world, we have many surprises. People are getting surprises, both good and bad. But let's focus on what really matters. And that's the surprising gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord, for the many ways in which you continue to bless us by giving us your son, Jesus Christ, on the cross for our sins. Lord God, we thank you that he didn't come as we expected, but Lord, he came as we needed. And for that, Lord, we tell you, thank you. Lord, help us to never, ever, ever forget that you do everything well, even when it's not up to our expectations. For Lord, your ways are not our ways. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. But Lord, we trust that you have better intentions for us than we even have for ourselves. So we tell you, thank you, Lord. Lord, help us to not be selfish with the gift that you give us, but help us to share it with others, despite the fact that it doesn't come packaged how we want it to. We love you, God. We honor you and we adore you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Join me now for Faith Reflection. The most surprising gift I've ever received was a drive-by retirement party given by my daughter, friends, and family. When I hear the word rejoice, the first thing that comes to my mind is celebrate. I might see someone rejoicing when they graduate from high school or college get a promotion or a raise on their job, a family member or friend being healed, or we as a church when someone gives their life to Christ. I will rejoice right now because out of all we went through 2020, me and my family are still safe and have not contracted COVID-19. Thank you for choosing to worship with us today. We pray that you were blessed by this experience. Until next time, have a blessed week.